Good afternoon. Rivalries in competition can spark amazing storylines between two or more people. When the true number one is still in question, it pushes people harder to try and claim the title. Speedrunning is no exception to this concept. Over the past decade, speedrunning has sparked some of my favorite rivalries. The runners battling it out are striving for first place at whatever cost, even if it means leaving the others in the dust. In Super Mario 64, we've had Ponke vs. Cheese, in Super Metroid we've seen Rizost and Behemoth, and in Goldeneye and Perfect Dark there is the classic rivalry that has lasted over a decade at this point between Ace and Clemens. But sometimes, games have a champion. A person so dominant, no person can match their skill and dedication. A person who seems so unreachable that a rivalry isn't even in the question. They simply destroy the game. For the past four years, this is the case with Jack and Daxter The Precursor Legacy. There's been many great runners throughout the game's history, but one man stands out from the rest. On the 13th of February 2020, a full world record sweep in every single major and miscellaneous category of the game was achieved. This is the story and legacy of Outrageous Josh. The humble beginnings of Outrageous Josh go back to October of 2014, where he started taking interest in speedrunning and was doing offline runs and practice without recording software. It wasn't until almost a full year later that on June 10th of 2015, we saw the man play for the very first time. And the quality was, uh, questionable? But here we have a rising star posting his first time with proof. The time achieved would have put him in fifth place with a bit over three and a half minutes behind the world record, which is very respectable for your first run with proof. Josh was an early experimenter. After his first upload at any percent run, he tried his hands at different categories, even if he felt like maybe he could improve his any percent time. Orbless is a category where you complete the game without collecting a single precursor orb, which makes for some tricky and unique movement to maneuver around them. Josh found a strong liking to this category and focused on it for a bit. On September 5th, 2015, Outrageous Josh would claim his first world record in Jack and Daxter in the Orbless category with 114.37, beating the world record by almost two minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did it, man. Oh, I did it. The category wasn't quite as optimized or as prestigious as, let's say, any percent or 100%, but it was a good start for Josh. Sometimes overcoming a barrier like this is what can drive you to push for your next goal. Josh would dive into the 100% category as well. His PB was obviously very beatable, seeing as he only completed his first run, but I think it's a unique strategy to play every category out there to familiarize yourself better with the game's mechanics, and that's something I don't see a lot of people doing. To be fair, he was most likely just approaching the game this way because he was just having fun with the game, and wanted to explore every avenue. But the differences in categories have enough variance that the understanding of information and mechanics will pay off long term. Josh would go back to any percent in Jack, but he would also dabble in other speed games such as Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. On November 21st, 2015, Josh became the fifth ever person to complete Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy in under an hour, this time only two minutes off the record and with a capture card as well. Uh. Dude, got it. <laughs> Finally. At this point, Josh's skill was good enough that he started making tutorials on his YouTube channel to help out newer runners get into the game while simultaneously implementing harder strategies into his own runs, such as Claw Skip or Lava Walk, whichever you prefer. On the Claw boss fight after the second hub, you can grab a certain rock and clip into the lava surface, where you can then walk past the boss. Even now in 2020, this trick is still a dice roll. And on a good day, this trick is maybe a 1 in 4 at best. And if you die, you lose 30 seconds. Even upwards of a minute and a half in some other categories. But this never discouraged Josh. He saw the other runners above him go for it, it was time that he went for it as well. 
His movement entering 2016 was starting to get really good now, up to par with the best of the best. In Orbliss, where he set his first record ever, he was beaten by Headstrong a couple of times, but he took the record back. They battled it out for a while, but Josh, for the first time, came out on top. Later that year in 100%, Josh snuck in his first world record despite being somewhat of an underdog in the category. Piggleberry and Saxman definitely had the upper hand on the category for a while, but Josh managed to show that he too is a force to be reckoned with. Any percent however was the real test. It had been dominated for two years by the one player who also got the first ever time below an hour, Headstrong. In 2016, Josh managed to creep closer to Headstrong's time, but it took until 2017 for his skills to develop even further to take the record for the first time ever in history with his 56-24 on May 31st. Woo! Got him! You... <laughs> we did it! We did it! We finally freaking did it. I suppose now is a good time to talk about the categories for Jack and Daxter. The reason I never brought them up earlier is because in recent years we've seen a lot of new categories being invented because major skips were found that shortened the game's playtime massively. It was found in January of 2016 that you could skip the 72 power cell requirement to get into Lava Tube by doing a series of out-of-bounds movement and by abusing the game's checkpoint mechanics. I will go more into detail about this later in the video because it will come up again. In December of 2018, Fire Canyon skip became possible on console, and thus was done in runs. This skipped the 20 cell requirement from Hub 1 to Hub 2. This was found with the help of a glitch where you can infinitely bounce on the lava surface, but I could dedicate another video on just this one trick alone, so I won't go into detail on it here. This means that any percent was divided into three categories. Any percent, no FCS, and no LTS. Any percent has no restrictions. It allows both of these skips to be used in a run. No FCS disallows the use of Fire Canyon Skip, which makes for a nice mid-length category. No LTS disallows the use of Lava Tube Skip, so it's essentially old any percent before all of this stuff was found. You can still do Fire Canyon Skip in no LTS, but it's way slower. Earlier in the video I mentioned that Josh had taken down Headstrong's any percent world record with his 5624. By the time he beat the record, the category had already seen a name change to no LTS. The three any percent categories, 100% and Orbliss are seen as the most relevant categories by the community. But if you click on the miscellaneous tab on the speedrun.com leaderboards, you can see that all orbs, all flies, and no major skips exist as well. All orbs require you to collect all 2000 precursor orbs with no restrictions on the skips. All flies is the same thing, you must collect 112 scout flies in the game with no restrictions on the skips either. No major skips is a very old category that has remained on the leaderboards due to historical reasons. You cannot perform lava tube skip or fire canyon skip, and you can also not skip the claw boss fight as well as a few other things. Now with the air cleared, let's get back to Josh. By mid-2017, Josh was starting to pick up steam. He was no longer an upcoming player or a rising star but one of the game's top players. He got the world record for two of the miscellaneous categories, including the first 102 in no major skips on June 1st, and the record in all orbs on August 31st. Alright, 21. I'll take it, dude. Josh was also improving his own records in no LTS, not being satisfied with just simply achieving the records. He wanted to go lower. He improved his 5624 three times in December to 5622, 5621, and finally 5613 on December 20th. These times are getting really optimized. And at this point, it seems that only Josh is able to take some of these games' categories lower. The question started to be on people's minds that Josh could just be the new best player in the game. And the following events certainly proved that. What was next in store for Josh is one of the most important grinds in the community's history, and would come to shape one of the most praised runs of all time. Before Fire Canyon Skip was found in late 2018, Josh wanted to push himself as hard as he could in any percent, or no FCS as it would be dubbed once the skip was found. This push for the god run was incredible to watch, so incredible that I need to dive a little deeper into what it takes to complete a good run of no FCS for you to fathom what I'm talking about. Old any percent or no FCS is a very brutal category. 
You require 20 cells to get through Fire Canyon, which means you need to do Geyser Rock, the opening level, Forbidden Jungle, and Sentinel Beach. The first hub can be quite tricky, as your movement needs to be flawless because every second is going to start to matter. And the first hub is where your movement really gets pushed to the test. Any small bonk or mistimed roll jump can be the end of the run. You then need to head to Fire Canyon and arrive in the second world. For the speedrun, you don't go around collecting any power cells at all in the second hub. You require 45 cells to lift the boulder to get into the claw boss fight, but this is very easily skipped with some tight maneuvers. This is not very difficult to perform for top players, but you can still fail it if you do it too fast. Next is the claw boss fight I was on about earlier. You need to get the lava walk first try to retain your 4 health to perform lava tube skip later. This means if you get hit by anything unnecessary, your run is over. As mentioned previously, this trick is a 1 in 4 on a good day. Which means to get the world record, you need to accept the fact that more or less 75% of your runs end here. In some other categories, you don't need to be at 4 health for the run, so if you burn yourself on the rock, you can try the skip again, but in no FCS, you have to get it on your first go, and fast too. After that, you go through Mountain Pass into the third hub, Volcanic Crater. This is where stuff gets somewhat complicated because we're about to start the sequence that leads to Lava Tube Skip. I already touched upon what you're skipping with this trick, but now it's time to get technical. The first goal for Lava Tube Skip is to get out of bounds. This can be done by doing something known as a rocket uppercut. What you have to do to perform the trick is uppercut into a certain plank on the minecart rail. The reason it's this specific one is that there is some strange collision in some areas of the game that allow you to repeatedly jump into the ceiling. This is because the game is giving you a standpoint for a short duration. This was appropriately named an infinite jump ceiling. Once you perform the uppercut, you get the standpoint while the momentum from the uppercut is still going. So once you reach your max height, you go into the first person goggles. You cannot open the goggles normally if you're in the air, so the reason we need the grounded standpoint is for this reason. This can all be quite tricky to perform and often won't be first try. After exiting the goggles, you need to do an extended uppercut towards the rocks on the left. Once you're out of bounds, you go through the trigger to load in Lava Tube. You then stand still for 30 seconds to trigger Jack's idle animation, which stores Lava Tube in the game's memory. You then have to go back to get the checkpoint for the third hub, Volcanic Crater. After that, you go back into Lava Tube, but do a very precise extended uppercut around the first checkpoint trigger in the level. Now you need to traverse through Lava Tube on foot without the zoomer that you unlock at 72 power cells. This is done by jumping on as many areas as possible in the Lava Tube that don't have hitboxes. We often refer to these areas as cold spots. There are a total of three times where the distance is too great for Jack to traverse without taking damage. This is why we need 4 health all throughout the run so we can lose 3 of them to perform Lava Tube Skip. If you get hit unnecessarily at all, the run is over completely. Once you have reached this Scout Fly box, you need to do a boosted uppercut on the side of the box to reach the next cold spot. Since you did the extended uppercut earlier that skipped the first checkpoint in the level, now when you do the same idle animation trick in this location, after 30 seconds you need to do a pause buffer which requires you to press R1 and start on the same frame which deloads Volcanic Crater. This makes the game give you the assumed closest checkpoint, which is halfway through Lava Tube. If we did not deload Volcanic Crater by doing the pause buffer, we would have been put back there. Once that is over with, at the end of Lava Tube, you need to perform two more pause buffers that is used to skip cutscenes that usually take several minutes. You also need to nail both of these first try for optimal time save. One is for the Kira Portal cutscene, and one is going through the door entering Golan Maya Citadel. After that, it's on to the final boss, which isn't difficult casually, but in the speedrun after each phase of the boss's attack, you can lower the jump height of Jack by doing a frame-perfect spin input on the jump pad. You need to press X to jump on the jump pad, and then exactly 15 frames later, you need to spin by pressing circle at this exact time to lower Jack's height, which starts the next phase of the boss earlier. This can be done three times and saves two seconds each, which is just more difficult tricks on top of an already hard run at this point. At the very end, you have to grab the white eco to finish the run, which can spawn anywhere in the arena, but is more likely to spawn far away from you. As you can see, it is a very brutal run with many run killers. The early history of No FCS was mostly worked on and lowered by Headstrong. She was the first person to do a full run with Lava Tube Skip, clocking in at 37.43. As time went on, Lava Tube Skip got easier to perform and Headstrong was soon not the only person being able to perform the skip. But she was the one to bring it all the way down to the 25s and eventually the first 24 with 24.57. 
Josh got his hands involved as well, getting his first world record in the category with 2446. This run is an interesting piece of history, actually. It was supposed to be a run where Josh would complete a run of every category in the game back to back. He started with no FCS because it's the hardest category of them all, so if he had to reset, it's best to get that one out of the way first. Miraculously, however, he ended up getting a new world record in no FCS, ending up breaking down in tears and simply couldn't continue the all categories run. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I have legitimate tears in my eyes. This run is also often referred to as the Nibor run, since this run sparked up a very infamous YouTube comment that moved on to become somewhat of a meme in the community. Feel free to read the whole thread for a laugh. From here on out, Josh's only competition in no FCS is that of old school runner Sir Jazzberry, who lowered the record to 2443, but Josh took it back the next day with 2440. This run was really good for the strategies utilized, but crumbled towards the very end. Josh had a 12 second lead going into the late game, including a first try rocket uppercut. He got a slightly sloppy oranges room, as we call it. He missed the cutscene skip on the Kira cutscene at the end of Lava Tube, which cost him about 6 seconds, and he missed all three of the one frame jumps on the final boss. Despite all these mistakes, Josh left the category for a while to focus on other things. He would come back and lower his time to 2434, and Jazz would approve upon this to 2430 in the coming months, but no one would really make a hard push for the category for a while. The real battle between Josh and Jazz wouldn't take place until October of 2018, where they would trade and lower the world record a total of 6 times until Josh got a 2418. At this point they were using every minor movement optimization that they could. I mean, the first level alone, Guys of Ruck, is done 2 seconds faster than when Josh got his 2446. Josh's 2418 was really good. The only things he could improve upon at this point was movement. In Forbidden Jungle, Josh grabbed the ledge on the tower climb, costing him a second. The tower climb in Sentinel Beach cost him a second. He nailed the 1 in 4 claw skip first try, but lost a tiny bit of time from a bad camera angle after the skip. He once again first tries Rocket Uppercut and gets Lava Tube skip with ease. He hits the two frame perfect cutscene skips and his final boss hits one of the three one frame jumps. A great run, but the ultimate run was brewing in the back. Josh pushed himself the hardest he ever has and grinded for absolute perfection because he wasn't settling for anything but that. The run I'm about to show you is perhaps the best Jack and Daxter speedrun of all time. For the strategies utilized and for how brutal this route is, this is in many people's opinion, the apex. On October 25th, 2018, Josh would start the attempt that would go on to be the run. His early game was average, only a few seconds behind his best. Slowly but surely, he just saved more and more time. His movement was on point. Claw skip is once again first try, and this time he walks to the right for a slightly more optimal line and to avoid the bad camera. At this point, Josh realizes his pace is amazing, and it gets to him a little bit. His movement was a bit shaky heading over to the rocket uppercut spot. He nails it first try, and quickly too. Lava Tube Skip goes flawlessly. With this enormous pressure, Josh nails both of the frame perfect cutscene skips and moves on, yet again, to the last boss. Being in the chat live when something like this is going down is incredible. The intensity floating in the air is so bad that you can't handle it. It's gonna come down to the one frame jumps.
<clears throat> okay, I'm fine. I'm okay. Please get, please get the freaking, please get it, please. Please, 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 please. please. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. When everything was set in stone, and the final cutscene was playing, I knew that I was witnessing history. This is the reaction we got. Oh my god! I stuck with this freaking category. I was about to break down. Like, I was, <laughs> I was days away from breaking down, dude, like completely. I was so close. Like, I broke down to Jazz, man. Like, I, I couldn't do it. At one point, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. Seeing 2408, like, it's actually real. It's actually real. <laughs> Yo, who's chopping onions in here, man? <laughs> 2408. <laughs> I think at this point, it was solidified. If Outrageous Josh wasn't already the best of all time, this run certainly proved it. I knew when I was making this video, it was going to be difficult to balance how much time I should talk about the game and how much I should be focusing on Josh. But I knew from the very start that if I had to include one run that described Josh the best, it's this one for sure. The amount of hard work it took for him to get this time is insane. And I take my hats off for completing such a great run, even with all the nerves. The run would later be retimed to 2407 and would not be beaten for 14 months. And only with the help of a route change that saved a lot of time, it was lowered. If a route change hadn't been discovered, who knows how long the 2407 would have stood for. If we fast forward to February of 2020, Josh sweeped the entire leaderboard for Jack and Daxter, holding the world record in every single category, and as of making this video, he still holds all of them. A massive congrats to Josh for this amazing achievement. The skill and perseverance after playing the game for 6 years is remarkable. The crazy thing is, Josh doesn't only excel at Jack and Daxter. He has a top 5 time in Jack 2, has a top 5 time in SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, and was formerly top 3 in Ratchet & Clank 2. While this video is primarily on Josh, I do want to give a special thanks to all the Jack 1 runners who pushed him to achieve the times that he got. Sir Jazzberry is an invaluable runner and is maybe the person that helped Josh the most in achieving the 2407. Headstrong for pushing the game in its earlier stages. And the two newcomers, Chimforce, who prevented the sweep from happening in the All Flies category until Josh got it back. And Mike, who had a heated battle with Josh over the No FCS record when the new route came out and who also seems to have the best shot at taking the world record in 100%. Josh is also incredibly close to partnership on his Twitch channel. If you want to go drop him a follow and help increase his viewership, that little extra push is all he needs to be eligible to apply. I want to thank you very much for watching. The recent support from the previous Sly video was overwhelming, so I've now went ahead and made a Patreon where you can support me if you want to see more videos like this one. I'm still new to YouTube creation and Patreon stuff, so if something seems off or if I'm forgetting something, please let me know in the comments. I appreciate all feedback. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. There will be more coming soon. Take care, and have a good one.